the World War One Heritage Group was formed in 2014 to research, collect, restore and record information, artifacts and memorabilia around the period 1914 to 18. Their first uh, project was to restore the Roll of Honour, which recorded the names of 88 men that participated in World War One. As research was carried out to discover more names, this role is now restored and it will be housed in the new library when it's opened in the autumn. We also need to remember those that did come home and trace the lives that they also lived afterwards. That I had two uncles killed in World War One. The father was one of the lucky ones to come back. And not an item I would have agreed with the father his decision to don the British uniform or the two uncles, go out and get killed and he to come back half gassed and he, he was not the same man, I can assure you, because the smallest thunderstorm made me feel sorry for him because he would go in under the bed. These are my memories of the war. You know, it affected him deeply, and really and truly, he did die a young man. But my involvement with the group here was to see a plaque that these people came back, put together, the names of 88 soldiers who died on the great battlefields of France. The, the judging was based on four criteria, presentation and clarity, interaction with the judges, content and variety, and intergenerational sources. In the end, it was a difficult decision, but uh, we had to pick a winner. Uh, we hear a lot about the war these days and the horror of First World War. The men that joined up, they had actually positive reasons for joining that army, like poverty, just a meal on the place, a set of underwear, boots or shoes that they had all that by joining the army. They were now the property of the army and the army could have done what it liked with them. So men went off to war with their comrades. They fought in the trenches for days and nights and lost three or four hundred men. My connection to the World War One project is my grandparents and I checked on the Borks, my mother's side of the family, and uh, Willie Bork joined the army in 1914 and then his brother Jack. Uh, Jack came back uh, he lost a leg out there. He was in a trench with three other fellas. They were killed. He got shrapnel, uh, took the leg off, and he was sent back to Ireland. An old story that to say about Jack was that uh, himself and uh, it was a, I think it was an uncle or a grand uncle of Mickey Murray. They lost two two legs, or a leg each, but a left and a right, and uh, both of them the same size feet. So uh, they would go and buy their shoes, a size nine. One would take the left one and the other fellow would take the right one. He, he was gassed so he had, his health wasn't great in later life and you'd hear him moaning above in the, in the room and Nak, Nina would look up and she said, oh, God help him. So I wrote a poem and the name of the poem is called The Dream. He toss and turn and stay awake but sleep would always come. He dream of childhood friends and happy times but chums. Then came the nightmare of that half-forgotten day. He'd smell the gas, he'd hear the screams, and he'd try to run away. He'd see the flash, he'd hear the guns, the roaring in his head, the cries of friends he used to have. Those friends are now all dead. For years and years he'd have that dream. He's back there in that fight, the war to end all wars. He'd live it every night. Hush, now don't you wake him. His nightmare's at an end. Just remember Jack, he's happy now, he's sleeping with his friends. Rest in peace, Jack Buck. Thank you. <laughs>